Good afternoon and good evening, depending where you're watching from. Um, this is episode number 527, and the topic today is when the shit is a fan, how do you recover? Um, there's some relevance for this and some topics, but I also want to speak to this in a more um, inclusive reference. But before I get to that, let me, let me introduce myself. Um, oh, okay, sorry, I just saw my computer light up or something. I'm like, what was that? Let me stay focused. Hi, my name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. And help strong, successful women. Say, let me try again. Rushing this in. Okay. Hi, my name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship relationship attraction expert. And help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which has led to these talks that I've done for the last almost two years called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart. And today's topic, which is not just for women, but it certainly may land for them, as much as it does for the men as well, and this is episode 527, by the way, as a reminder. Um, the topic today is when the... I'm trying to, trying to keep it um, clean without using it, but when, when the, you know, whatever you call it, it's the fan, um, how do you recover? And I'm going to speak to this from different angles because the thing is, I'm realizing more and more lately, there's been a lot of people feeling very distressed and distraught and totally justifiably, but also what's next? I, I'm reflecting also on the interview I had, which I posted the link a couple of days ago, which was um, what comes after me too, because that's part of this thing too. What happens next? Because a lot of people right now, especially in the LA area, because um, today we smelt it big time. The wind changed direction, and so we were getting all the not uh, all of it. We got a lot of smoke and ash dropping down, and the smell was very evident. And after a moment, that we had fires here, but it's just the the wind blowing it from over from Malibu to us in like West LA, um, which made for a bit of a weird day today. And some pretty amazing pictures of the sun, as I posted on my Facebook page. And by the way, this is a Facebook Live first, which goes onto YouTube later on. So in case you're wondering if I start interacting with people, why you can't see who I'm interacting with, it's because it was on YouTube, on Facebook first. And I'll give the links to those at the back end. So at the moment, quite a few friends of mine, quite a few friends of mine, in fact, are dealing with this, um, the fire. And some of them, I just saw a post from a friend of mine that actually got to go back to her home in Agura Hills, which is close to where the fire started. And the houses were untouched. The fire came right up to the fence and stopped. Like some miracle preserved their home. So it was incredible relief to know that. But a lot of my friends have been so lucky. A lot of my friends have lost um, their homes. Some have lost pets. Um, it's been traumatic. So I've been sitting with like how to do a topic that is inclusive of that. Um, when the stuff hits the fan. Yes, exactly. Thank you, Jermaine. <laughs> That's why I put the hashtag in there just to like give it some emphasis. But yes, so I've definitely been feeling for a lot of my friends who are going through major challenges right now because some of them can't get back to the home to know if they've even survived. And some people have and the homes are okay and some people have and the homes haven't been okay. So this is the challenge of when you have forest fires and we've had quite a few of those in LA, in the Southern California for quite a while. I was in, I used to live in Topanga many years ago and when the Malibu fire hit then, we were pretty ready to evacuate and it was only it was like two three ridges away from us and we could see it glowing over the hillside and it just didn't it, frankly we changed direction and it didn't come to us it went a different direction so i know what it feels like in some ways to be threatened by the fire i'm grateful i'm not to deal with that ever but people going through natural disasters in some ways is no different from people going through traumatic experiences in a relationship so i was looking at how i can carefully put those together because i know for some people going there's no way those relate but some of the emotional content does, and that's what I want to speak to. Um, this also includes if you've lost a loved one. And you know, when, when I lost my mother back in 2012, some of this came up for me. So I'm, I'm tying into some of my own experiences, just so you know it's not just me speaking at stuff, I'm actually going from my own experience. But also things you can take into life that you can use in your relationships, or I should say after relationships, because some of you may go through some, through some traumatic breakups. But also when you go through some traumas and tragedies of your own life, because Part of the human experience seems to include that for other people. And I've been through quite a few of my own as well, so I know what it feels like. And yes, I'm gonna speak about self-love as part of it because that's a big piece of what we forget to do. And it's so ridiculously simple, yet we don't do it. But before I get to that, the first thing I wanna say is when you are going through some um, challenge, shall we say, some stuff hitting the fan, so to speak, as, as Jermaine so kind of put it, 
what a lot of people tend to do right at the beginning is deny it or, or ignore it or pretend it doesn't exist. There's a lot of behavior that people take on, and this happens in, in business challenges and in relationship challenges as well. People will basically just ignore things. In fact, that's the interesting thing. When physical stuff happens, like houses burning down or an earthquake taking out property or your car being destroyed, we tend to accept that reality more easily than when we have an emotional challenge, breakup, disorder, disconnection in a work environment or a personal relationship environment, which is interesting to notice that we are more accepting of material challenges than we are of emotional challenges. So that's just a little awareness I just had. So take that one and consider that one for a while. Secondly, what a lot of people do when they go through challenges is they tend to take on the emotional weight themselves and collapse, get depressed, be um, distraught to the point where there's no rescuing them. And I've been there with clients, so I know it, I know both up close and personal as well as having some experiences myself of the temptation of that. And I know I want to sort of deny the emotional weight and the challenge that people go through because it is extremely challenging. But I want to speak to one little thing, and this may sound um, like heresy, but there's some two, two to this. Let me jump into the self-love piece for a moment. We as human beings have a really bad habit when we are caring human beings, and this is the key because a lot of people don't care, don't worry about this. Interesting that. When we care about things, we become overly invested emotionally with those people or those things. So when they get taken away from us through some usually abrupt traumatic experience, it's gut-wrenching and it's almost like we can't handle it and we want to just end our lives. And I know friends of mine who have done that, who ended their lives because of some major upset, distress, or just couldn't take it anymore. I, I just felt like an attorney going, I offer to the jury this evidence. Um, there's a distinct, for me, recognition that when we truly, and I mean this seriously, not just say, like, here's my self-love program again, because I will talk about that and I'm seeking teasing it. But the truth is for many of us, when we go through these challenging times, it's very hard to find the love for ourselves because we have neglected ourselves on that level for a long time. If I did a survey of people in the world, even in my spiritual community, for that matter, I might do it tomorrow. Hmm, there's a little homework for myself. If I surveyed 20 people, if you surveyed 20 people out in the world and asked them, one, if they love themselves and two, how they love themselves, I would guesstimate, not guarantee, but I would guesstimate well over half of those people don't love themselves or don't, don't or have no distract of doing it themselves. They may go, yeah, I, do, I, I go to the gym or I eat healthy. That's not what, what I mean. I mean absolutely emotionally supporting yourself because it's easy to think we're loving ourselves when we go and do um, things that make us look good or feel good, like going to the movies or, as I said, working out or I mean, why not stand for some people? That's what works for them. None of that, frankly, is what I mean by self-love. What I truly mean by self-love is where you have a sense of support for yourself, where you love and appreciate who you are, independent of circumstance, situation, scenario, relationship. For most people, that's not even on the radar. So when people go through challenges and traumas, and when the shit hits the fan, yes, I use the SHIT word there, <laughs> it's, it's amazing to watch people forget to love themselves. And I'm not saying it would change, take the problem away, but here's the thing. If you practice loving yourself, caring about yourself, respecting yourself, honoring yourself, when and if, if and when, a trauma challenge thing happens that knocks you out of, come from left field, the reality is you'll still be able to stand on your own two feet. It may hurt like hell, but being authentic and honest with yourself allows you to, to manage that pain and that upset with a capacity you may not have had before. And I would suggest, I would offer to for the consideration of the jury, <laughs> that practicing self-love now, like practice self-love when there's nothing trying to going on, provide you with almost a fuel tank or a resource or an, almost like a battery pack of um, energy that you can call on and support yourself with when things don't go the way you want. 
And, this, and the thing about this is this applies to every area of, of every range, which should say a spectrum or a, yeah, just a range or a spectrum of experiences from really annoying to traumatic and change, transformational. You know, if something happened where you were in hospital because of an injury or an illness or dealing with someone like the fires. I mean, I mean, this is all ties together because for all of us, we have those challenges on different scales, different ways. And again, not belittling anybody, but I want to make sure we get this point that truly when we, not just you, but when we put our focus on how do we love ourselves all the time, when those situations happen, they can, they can become a little bit easier to manage. And the reality is, and this is the thing I saw friends in my post who were very conscious aware people who were, who were in Malibu where the fire went through, is I saw many posts where people were saying, it hurts like hell that their property has been destroyed and damaged. But the fact they have each other and that they survived is the blessing they're grateful for. That to me is shining a light on people loving themselves enough and loving themselves fully so they're not attached to their possessions, their property, their materialistic things as the be-all and end-all of life. Now, living in LA especially, there's a lot of that around where people are more invested in their car and their looks and they're about who they are. So if something goes sideways, their life is over, almost literally. I would suggest that we have a better choice. And so wherever you are in your life, if things are going great or things are not going great or things are traumatic, things are just average, whatever it is, right now is a good time to learn how to love yourself to really practice self-love practices, not just going to the gym and eating healthy, but where you put your hand over your heart, where you love yourself, you care about yourself, you are graceful and grateful for who you are, where you, have, where you use things like forgiveness and compassion and understanding for yourself so you can be a better person in your own life. And the thing about this is it may affect everything around you, but it starts inside. And I've talked about this in some of my coaching work with clients. When they ask me, I say, the truth is also, if you're looking for a relationship, if you start loving yourself first, the quality of relationship you attract will be way better than what you had before. So as simplistic as I'm saying this, and as simplistic as people think about it, self-love really is a powerful, <laughs> let's say Infinity Stone for a second, I was going to think of Marvel movies, but it's a powerful resource that we forget we have. So thank you, Jermaine, I appreciate the feedback. This is... That's why, I make, that's why I'm saying this. Is I, I'm, I'm pounding this point home because people don't do this. Like, please, for the sake of your life, for your, those around you and for your future relationships if you're single, learn how to love yourself as a human being, as a compassionate being, and to do the steps to be whole with yourself. For some people I know they're carrying around judgments and, and um, self-beliefs that are so negative, so demeaning that they don't know how to love themselves. And in fact, they don't think they're, and this is the other thing, they don't believe they're deserving of love from anybody else or themselves. And that I would call bullshit on in a heartbeat. Because the reality is, whatever happened to you, whatever happened, especially whatever happened to you, does not have any impact on your um, value, your ability to be loved. If people in the past didn't love you the way that you wanted, people in the past were, tr were, were, were abusing you, um, were um, Sorry, distractions, stay on track. People are, um, oh yeah, you're welcome, Jimmy. Thank you, I appreciate it. If people didn't respect you, love you, care about you when you were being raised, maybe they even abused you. I wanna say this to you clearly. If you are someone who's been through that trauma, that challenge, you still absolutely are worth being loving to yourself and loving to everybody else and receiving love. It may be challenging because the love you've been receiving is so convoluted and and, and um, dysfunctional, but you can start over and right this moment. You can learn to love yourself fully, properly, easily, clearly. I mentioned I'll talk about my self-love practice, so I'm gonna put it out here just so you know about it, but I don't have, you don't have to do this. Just take steps towards loving yourself, whether it is doing what I recommend, which is looking in the mirror, because it's the simplest way of doing it, or it's doing things like journaling and writing about it or it's painting or other things that I express your feelings and get yourself out there those are those are valid too the main thing is just connecting to your emotional expression and freeing yourself from the traps you put yourself under because we do that so my self-love practice which I put the com I'll put in the comments 
which is it's barryselby.com forward slash self love is a guided meditation actually two guided meditations morning and evening with a workbook that i offer as guidance to my clients and offer to you as a way that can help you to really start tuning the self-love um, frequency in more fully into your heart and i've said about that if you want some more support besides that if you want to get more help around how to forgive yourself how to really heal those wounds inside so you can love fully properly and effectively again then i invite you to 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 look me up as it were to sign up for a discovery session it's what i do in my work and we can talk first about it without any investment just time and i'll put the link for that in the comments as well but i want to say this one more time whatever you've been through and whatever may come up down the path ahead of you none of that has to, can has to stop you loving yourself when the shit hits the fan how you recover you start by loving yourself first and putting one step in front of the other you do those things fundamentally and you be honest about it with yourself you'll move much faster on the healing journey and you'll also attract much better quality of relationships around you i didn't plan to go that deep but i guess it was meant to be because i was talking about some pretty deep stuff I appreciate you being with me once again, my daily chat on Facebook Live at 5 p.m. So again, this is a Facebook Live that goes onto my business page on Facebook where you can watch the archives, which is Barry Selby, the author. It also goes onto my YouTube channel where I invite you to subscribe, which is the YouTube channel is uh, Barry Selby. All my social media is Barry Selby. So you can go there and watch it there if you wish. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And the playlist that this belongs to is Messages from the Masculine. And after that, I'm, and I'm doing this slowly, just be honest, I'm still going to get around to getting my Facebook Lives um, audios onto my uh, podcast on iTunes. So if you go to iTunes and look for Messages for the Masculine, you can subscribe to that podcast. There's about 35, 40 of those up there right now. I've still got 500 up here, so I've got more to go. And you'll find those as well. So I appreciate you being with me. I will see you again tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time as usual. And uh, I hope this is giving you some food. I hope this is giving you some food for thought. This is not simple. Well, it's not. I say this. It's simple. Isn't always easy. But take it to heart and please reckon, realize that anything that happens to you does not require you giving up. The things that happen to you are just challenges. They can be frustrating. They can be challenging for you to live with. But you're worth, you are worthy of more than that. You deserve more than that. And loving yourself is the great way to start. Thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow. I'll put the links in the comments as I mentioned. And I will see you again tomorrow. 5 p.m. Pacific time right here on this channel. Take care and I'll see you again soon. Bye.